there has been much debate over who should wield the powers under this bill. So there are three main considerations behind the proposal in this bill. First, as many have spoken, we need swift action against online falsehoods, given their virality and potential to cause harm. Secondly, and I think this is crucial, consequently, we need deep domain knowledge to expeditiously assess whether there is an online falsehood and if it is in the public interest to act. This is important especially because online falsehoods can occur in domains as diverse as healthcare, finance, or security. And if in each of these cases we expect one singular authority to render a judgment in a timely manner and take expeditious action, I think that is a very tall order. And finally, the third consideration is there must be accountability for the exercise of these powers. I would argue that vesting the authority in portfolio ministers with the availability of judicial oversight, as proposed in this bill, best meets all three considerations. The minister, supported by his ministry's officials and resources, would have the requisite domain expertise to make an assessment and act quickly to stem the potential harm arising from an online falsehood. Accountability is ensured as aggrieved parties can take action in court against the minister's decision. She is also answerable in parliament. Therefore, in assigning the powers under the bill to portfolio ministers, the bill, I humbly submit, appropriately and correctly locates authority with accountability, supported by the requisite knowledge and expertise to make expeditious decisions, which is essential when you're dealing with the virality of online falsehoods. I'm therefore somewhat surprised by the allegations bordering on the melodramatic of some Workers' Party members of Parliament who suggest that this bill allows ministers to arbitrarily decide what is true to impose penalties on individuals and to suppress any commentary. This is completely not the case, and let me break it down for you. First, the primary focus of this bill is not individuals per se, it is actually the larger tech platforms. But having said that, content often originates because of individual action, and therefore you can't completely exempt it from the focus of this bill. So assume someone puts up something online that has a falsehood. The minister, the portfolio minister, has to decide if it is false and is it in the public interest to act against it. If so, he has to then decide to issue a direction, whether it is a correction or takedown depending on what is the appropriate cause of action. The individual, since we decide to focus on individuals, taking out the case made by Mr. Lau and other members of the Workers' Party, the individual then has a choice. You comply with the direction, or you disagree, and you appeal to the minister. You apply to the minister for either a cancellation or a variation. And if the minister decides the direction is still valid, then the individual can appeal to the High Court within the prescribed period. Now, what then on the part of the executive? If the individual does not comply with the direction, the competent authority will commence investigations or may commence investigations for non-compliance with direction under Section 15 of this Act. Reasonable excuse is a defense to the criminal offense of not complying with the direction. The outcome of the investigation will be presented to the public prosecutor in AGC for decision on prosecution. If the public prosecutor decides to proceed, the matter will be brought to the courts, and the court will then decide on guilt and penalties. 
So this process is, is one where there is very clear due process. I fail to see how one can jump to the conclusion that ministers are judge and jury, or indeed exercising nuclear options. Also, the courts decide on the penalties. It's not the ministers. And the right to comment, that is the right to free speech, continues in the course of this process until and unless it's sub judice. In other words, the individual can and other interested parties can put up online commentary to say that I am the sub subject of a POFMA action, or as Ms. Lim San San put it, I'm being pofma And you can, go, you can take it up as a commentary and discussion. So I fail to understand how this encroaches on the rights of the individual, how it has this purported chilling effect that many members of the opposition claim. And certainly, given the safeguards and the due process that I've outlined, I don't see how this can be seen as ministers having excessive powers. Mr. Peng Ying Huat also talked about the election period. I don't know whether he has read section 52 of the Act. That section provides clearly for alternative authorities during the election period. So your entire speech about conflicts of interest during election is addressed by that section. Because during the election period, the minister will appoint ministers, different ministries, will appoint their permanent secretary or an equivalent senior official to act and exercise the authorities under this bill. 